Good evening, everybody. I would like to call the April 12th, 2021 Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting to order. Can we please start with the roll call? Sue Olberg. Here. Scott Conlin. Here. Jeff Ellen Bogan. Here. Paige Lewis. Here. Nicholas Novello. Here. Dan Olson. Here. And Council Liaison Aaron Rodriguez and Board Member Manoj Gangwar let us know that they will be absent this evening. Great. Thank you. So our first item is to approve the agenda. Does anyone have any proposed changes to the agenda? If not, can I get a motion and a second to approve? I move that we approve the agenda as written. Thanks, Sue. I second. Okay, sorry. Great. Go ahead, Scott. Second? Second. No, Scott wanted to second. <laughs> but whatever, it doesn't. I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor, signify with your hand, please. Aye. Aye. Great. Okay, so next we'll move to approval of the last meeting's minutes. Does anyone have any changes to the minutes? Okay, hearing none, uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes, please. I move that we approve the minutes. Thank you, Jeff. Make it a second. I second that. Dan says. Great. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. All those in favor of approving the minutes as written. Great. Unanimous. Okay. Um, we haven't heard that there are any community members that have asked to speak, but now is our pu public invited to be heard section. So if there are any community members who would like to speak during this portion of the meeting um, and have reached out to the secretary, they will be unmuted one at a time and asked to state their name and address for the record and will be informed that they have three minutes for comment. So we'll just take one minute to wait unless um, Nicola has heard of anyone that wants to speak. I have not received any notification of anyone who wishes to speak. Okay, we'll just take a, let's wait one minute, I'll set a timer. And if we don't hear from anyone, we'll go on to old business. Okay, still no word from anyone? No word from anyone. All right, thank you. Thanks everyone for taking that pause. Okay, so with that, we'll move on to old business. And hopefully you all saw from Nicola the um, CIP, Capital Improvement Project list. And so we wanted to take some time just to follow up on our previous discussion. Um, about capital improvement projects. And what I'd like to do is have David Bell give us a few context setting comments. And then um, I'd like to just do a round robin of board members. And here, if you have two or three 
projects from this list um, or anything else you'd like to mention in terms of what you think is a priority and why. So David, if you could just start us, start us off, that would be great. Good thing, Paige. Thank you. And since you give me the floor, I'm gonna go tangential for just a moment. Uh, I also hope that all of you saw um, the message about the volunteer appreciation for the month of April um, that the, the council members made that official volunteer month in April for the city of Longmont. And as an organization, we really depend on, on volunteers. I think a lot of times we think about the people that are cleaning up creeks and planting trees and um, doing things out in our park, but um, this board and others like it just do a great job for the city, giving up the evenings, doing a lot of reading, putting a lot of effort into um, trying to make our parks and open space and natural areas a, a great place, um, which is kind of a nice transition into this next topic, which is the CIP project. And I, I know if people give up their evenings, they come here with some agendas, as, and those, those are great agendas, trying to bring forward um, areas of interest in the community they represent. Sometimes they feel a little frustrated when you start looking at CIP processes, and it feels like a little bit like a rubber stamp because it's already been done by the time you guys get to the process. And I'm going to ask Steve and Dan to jump in here a little bit if I get this wrong, but being here five years, I've kind of seen it now go through a five-year cycle where um, Steve and Dan are working on projects that were out there five years ago and beyond because the way we approve our, our CIP process is we really are approving a five-year budget through council, but it's only one year that really gets funded. So when we get that one year done, the next year we really roll up those following years. A lot of times though, because of things like COVIDs or budgets, the previous year projects don't get done. Therefore we're still in the role of, of this. So as, as um, board members come on and looking for ways they can bring new ideas into the process, it can, I, I think, feel frustrated. There's not more opportunity to engage. So the city has been talking about this and our deputy city manager and assistant city managers looked at the way that we can start doing a better job of trying to gauge um, not only the, the boards, but also the community on our CIP projects, because I, I do feel like sometimes it feels like this is much more of an inform than an engage, and we'd like to get that point. So I think tonight as we go through this process, so it doesn't just feel that um, we're asking you just to go through a, an exercise. I think one of the things that staff definitely take away is, are we at least in alignment with, with some of these projects being so old? Does this still look like the way we should be moving? Are these are projects that people want to see? And if it's not, um, again, I think Steve's open invitation um, for, you know, anything out there you want to hear would be great, knowing that just because we hear it doesn't mean we can squeeze into the process. Um, and it's, it's not just the board. Um, I talked to Paige and Jeff a little bit too, because we have stuff in the community saying, hey, there's a great idea. Um, could you just do this? We bring a grant and money to it as well. Um, but we do get very limited to um, those approved projects by council, the limited number of staff, and trying to work through those. So we feel a little bit handcuffed sometimes on, on process, but we also want to engage this group and give you a chance to let us know what you're thinking about these projects. Are they things you think are important to the community right now? And if we are way off, we'd like to have that conversation as well. So I hope that helped a little bit, Paige, as, as we go through this exercise. Thanks, Dave. Uh, does anyone have any clarifying questions? Yeah, Jeff? Yeah, so looking at it, um, one thing I just noticed as I was went, going through the ones I highlighted was there's sometimes where a project number is listed for like six or seven things. So I guess that's one of my questions is, are those things all grouped or are they are there is there ABCD within, I'm looking at project 186 at the bottom. I'm like, oh, there's this Hover Park thing, but there's also 12 other things of the same code. But there's also so like, let me just say the part B, which is there's yep. so many things on here. Are we sort of rubber stamp? I mean, ultimately, most of these things will happen unless someone says don't make them happen, right? Or like, what are we really focusing on right now? Like, if we all say the things we like, and I guess I'm just wondering, can we come up with a plan for what, what we're going to attempt to do here rather than just randomly going, this park's near me and I like it? Yeah. You know that is a challenge. So that, that, and I guess I'll answer that part B is coming up with a plan. And that's what, you know, um, Paige, I talked to through a meeting, Paige and Jeff and I talked about this too. And I think as I talked to city leadership, what is the plan for trying to get this information and use in a way that um, we can make sure that we're reflecting current values as long as those ones that were, you know, if you look at the shortest span, which I know these projects have been, they're more than five years. If we're just rolling forward with those five years, is that still in alignment with what we're looking at doing? So, for us as staff, for me, this really helps to hear, are we at least 
going in the right direction. And if your park's close or not, we know it's maybe a couple of years out, are we still moving in that in that direction? So I don't know if there's a plan this evening and we could maybe continue the conversation, but for me, I'll be taking that up our leadership um, chain to um, our city manager, deputy city manager, say, you know, that we've taken this to our boards. The boards feel like this is appropriate work plan for us, but there's other things out there. And how do we work that into a system that's pretty much um, locked in the next five years or so? So um, it's, it's not an answer I, I really can give to you right now, that's but fine. it's one that I think we're all working on. And I think this exercise hopefully doesn't feel this, you know, as a futile exercise because it was going to get moved up through the city process. So that, that's so one thing I can tell you tonight. There's also no dates that I saw. So it's hard to know what is happening this year. If we're really only focusing on oh. what gets pulled off for this year, I didn't see that on here. I don't know if I looked at that, but Steve, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, actually, Steve, I'm gonna, I was going to turn it over to you for that, that part A, which was those group <laughs> projects. And we have a bunch of those together. So Steve and Kathy get a bunch of those. So I'll give it over to Steve to talk about how those kind of lump projects kind of come together. And I'm going to defer to Kathy on the lump projects because she managed there was more than I do. But as far as the dates, we intentionally did not give dates because what we're wanting to hear from the board is of all these projects that have been identified. I wouldn't say it's a rubber stamp. Yes, will they get done? But will they get done in two years or 20 years? That's a big difference. I, I get complaints from people who said I moved in next to a park site and I, want, I thought my kid would get to play there. I'm not kids in college now. And so. It really is trying to prioritize the, the funds that we have available and the resources we have available to develop these sites and figure out what are the most important for the board throughout the community. And before I turn it over to Kathy, the other thing I wanted to say is that there are a wide variety of goals that the city has and um, a lot of funding opportunities that we have. Uh, there were some questions from board members about you know, having some sort of a fake budget or figure out how to compare projects to projects. It's really impossible to do that. What we need to know is what the priorities are, and then we'll figure out a way to fund them. We have five or six or seven different funding opportunities for each project, and each fund has restrictions as far as what they can and cannot be used for. And so what we really want to hear are what are the most important projects, and we'll figure out the best way to prioritize different funding opportunities that we have for each project. But we're, we're really trying to find out what the priorities are. Kathy, do you want to add to that and maybe speak to the, the grouping of the projects? Yeah, I think that we want to hear um, what to advocate for, you know, and, and knowing and having Crab's backing on priorities really helps us, you know, have a tool to advocate. So I think we just need to know, you know, when we go into these meetings and we battle for funding, um, many different funding sources, like Steve said, um, it just helps to know what we really should be advocating for. So hopefully we can hear from you and then take that forward as we kind of go through this whole process. Um, but yeah, just real quick um, on the example you gave about PRO 186, um, that CIP is, is called um, Park Infrastructure Repair and Replacement. So that's really the park renewal program. So that CIP is sort of a program. Um, and then we're able, so I, I have, it's not just one project. Then we identify the park renewal projects within that CIP. So it becomes many projects. So I kind of listed them out so that you could advocate for certain park renewal projects um, that you see more pressing, um, rather than just say, hey, I support park renewal. <laughs> we wanted you to see that, that, that there are many projects within that. Yeah, and I would just add that the same is indicative on that spreadsheet as far as PRO 083, missing primary greenways and secondary greenways. There are some projects that are in the new additions, and there are some projects in the, the um, what do we call them, Kathy? I can't remember. I, don't have the, I only have one screen. Um, sorry, in the enhancement and restoration projects. So that project is appropriate for funding both types of projects. What we wanna hear from the board is should we put our resources and funds that we have available to us toward new construction within that project or towards enhance, enhancement or restoration within that project. So it's, it's really, they're all good projects. There's not a bad one on here. It's just a matter of trying to prioritize the ones that are the most appropriate.
Thanks, Thanks for, for that, that clarification. Oh, yeah, Dan. Dan Wilford. And certainly can appreciate what Kathy and Steve are saying. Uh, you know, good example of this. And, and Jeff, your comment about all these are going to get built. As I look at PR 77 uh, Macintosh, you know, we did the master plan for Macintosh in 2003 when the master plan got approved. And so it's been a couple of years since 2003, and we, we still have a couple phases. So uh, again, um, the same Frank Greenway. Um, the, the master plan was adopted in 2000, Steve, or somewhere in that general area. And we're still working on, you know, phase 13. So really, like Kathy and, and Steve and David said, we're, what we really want to know is what your priorities are so that we can plug them in and advocate for them. Thanks, Dan. That was, I think as you share your priorities, um, the why is important, you know, and recognizing that we do have limited time, but I think to the extent that you can share the why in terms of priorities, it will help staff understand sort of how our current thinking and how, as we reflect the community, might be or not be in tune with where it was um, when the master planning was done or when these projects started. So I think reflecting on why you think the projects that you highlight are important, I think will be helpful. Scott? Um, Did you have a comment? The, yes, I said a uh, quick question first. Um, on on Piero 083 for Rough and Ready Trail, um, it says replace the surface. Is this the this section that is um, asphalt? This is, I think, to Steve. Is this the yeah. asphalt section? Uh, well, it's it's part concrete. Just south of, of Mountain View is concrete uh, for about a fifth of the way. And then I got Paul Fitzgerald texting me right now. I, or not grab, <laughs> um, and uh, and then the 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 other four fifths is asphalt. None of that meets any sort of ashto requirements. All of the surfacing is falling apart. But yes, that's the section between Mountain View and Pace. Okay, thank you. Jeff, did you have another question? Yeah, I think this is directed at our board. So I am guess I'm wondering, are we just going to take turns highlighting and, and saying why we like things? Or is there going to be some sort of process we want to do where at the end we vote on our priorities? Or is it more like everyone shares or like, say you say something you like, Paige, should I acknowledge that with a nod? Or we say, yeah, that's one I like. So we don't repeat ourselves. I'm just looking for a little structure of how you want to run this. And yeah, no, that's a great question. Before, before, I mean, before you answer, Nikki I, or Aurora, are you going to yeah. keep score? Is someone going to keep score? Like, who's going to tally this? Is it up to Kathy and I, or is someone else going to do that? I'm curious as well. Steve, I, I have been asked as the board secretary to do the tally. And I, I might suggest, I mean, I don't know if we'll be timely for this particular process, but what I had in mind is that we could share our thinking on this one and kind of see where everybody's at, see if there are commonalities between our priorities. And if there are, then I think we certainly could have a follow-up conversation to see what we want to do about that. You know, is there some way that we could work with staff to raise the priority of that particular thing or a few things? It may be that we all have such different priorities that you know, there's no commonalities, and then I think it's a little more complicated. <laughs> Are you hoping we're each going to share one first, or do we go and share all three of the ones we like the most, so we don't over talk? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, why don't we each do two? I mean, I think, you know, it, we don't necessarily have to, so why don't we each do two and then see where we are? Do you want to get us started, Jeff, or is there somebody else that Oh, yeah. Do you? I'm sorry. One last thing. Remember, the list that we provided are the lists that are on our radar in the next five years or so. There are other projects out there. You are not confined by this list. If you as a board think that there are other things that are of a higher priority than what's on our list, we want to hear that as well. Sorry. Just wanted to clarify one last thing, which is we are not talking about anything related to a, a rec center or a pool or anything like that. This is only natural resources, correct? 
Like I noticed Sunset I had that Pool is not too. on there at all. If we were to build a rec center or a pool, it would be in a park and it would be, we, Kathy or I would be dealing with that directly. Be figuring I out. I know we're not, we're not proposing a new rec, like that's a bigger thing, like having a, a you, you vote, know, but if, like if, fixing if one we, isn't. If we went to city council and said that we went to our parks and recreation advisory board, gave them a list of 30 capital improvement projects, but the highest priority project for all seven board members was a new rec center or pool. There's, there's a message in there. Okay. So. So yeah, I, I just wanted to reiterate that I think Jeff's not here tonight, but yeah, those other rec area things are, are definitely things that, um, able to discuss tonight as well. But Steve and Kathy within our, my work group, definitely this is the list that they have and they're working on. And that's where my, the primary project managers are and then where their time is spent. And these are projects that we can fund through the funding sources that we've talked about. A rec center or pool is outside of those. That's, that's a bond issue or a vote or whatever. That's not something within our current um, purview. Are we ready? Do you want to go, Jeff? Why don't you get us started? I'm I'm willing to because I think I can be quick. To me, the dog park relocation project seems obvious to me that it's going away. The number two on by airport. Um, I'm advocating for that because people love dog parks, and if that one has to go away, then I think we should build a second one. I don't actually even use dog parks, so I don't have an attachment to that. It just seems like something the community would <laughs> No dog would in want. that fight. I, ha I have friends who have said a related dog comment, which is, I wish I had more places to take my dog off, which is what they're talking about, places like Button Rock. But if they're not going to be able to do it at Button Rock, then we should have dog parks for them. Um, and then I guess I'll just advocate for a second one, which is in that Project 186, the Hover Park. Um, I'm a pickleball advocate. Now the pickleball is not part of that project, but that park itself does look super antiquated. So I'm assuming, and I would love clarification that there is no plan. And actually those pickleball courts are fine, but like the park itself next to it, Hover Park certainly looks like it could be upgraded. So I'll advocate for that one too. And I had several others, but those will be the two I mentioned. Great. Thank you. Do you have anything particular about well, Hover Park? I guess you you said your why in know. terms of the condition, right? It just it looks like it was a park. I, I'm guessing it was like 2000, and I actually don't really know how old parks are. Like I'm not good at that at all. But to me, as someone who has a young baby, as you've all seen, I took my daughter there once. There's <laughs> something she could use, and you know, I, I'll go back. I like that park, but it does feel old to me. And I know they mentioned sidewalk upgrades. I can tell you as someone who pushes strollers over there, there's places where it's <laughs> bumpy and things like that as you cross concrete and things like that. That's me Great. advocating Thanks, for Jeff. one that I live near. Yeah. <laughs> Is there someone that wants to go next? If not, I can do what I do at work and just start calling on the tiles. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in. Okay. Um, so, so Jeff, um, I think it's kind of funny he had the dog park as the top one because my, my first question was going to be after last month's meeting, um, it sounded like they were deferring it because facility, maintenance and facilities doesn't need the space. So I was going to ask if we actually push that one off because it sounds like dog park number two isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So instead of being a pick, it was like basically the opposite of a pick of saying, maybe this shouldn't even be on the list if we don't actually need it. But that would be a, this more of a staff question. Um, so my, for my picks, um, I, I think that the number one um, for me is, uh, is the, the drainage project, it's listed as a drainage project, uh, DRN 028 Spring Gulch number two, Greenway phase three. That's a, a mouthful. But um, phase two was so fan is so fantastic getting to Union Res, and Sandstone is fantastic, but there's not a great way to connect the two. And um, on the bicycle Longmont perspective, we've already heard from at least 50 people who have said, "How do I get from here to there? How do I how do we make that happen?" And so um, I know going under the railroad tracks um, is going to be an expensive endeavor. Um, 
but I would love to prioritize that so that someone could, you know, bike from 23rd or so all the way down to Union Res, all the way down to, to uh, Sandstone Park, and then all the way out to airport um, on greenways. Um, it'd be an amazing way to get around the city. So uh, I'd love that to see that connection um, uh, be added in. And then the other one, of course, is, is another bike related one that I would like to see prioritized. It was a top priority from Bicycle Longmont in our survey uh, that I shared with you was um, in PRO 083, um, the Dry Creek Greenway Trail behind uh, Village of the, uh, the Peaks um, is a way for cyclists uh, and pedestrians to be able to connect from Hover to the new bikeway of Sunset um, and then eventually to St. Frank Greenway. Um, but I think that that um, that trail should be uh, connected right there. Great. Thanks, Scott. Sure. Steve, did you want to answer I... that question? Did I, was I off base on the dog park? <laughs> Should I have paid more no, attention? No, it's funny. It's funny Scott mentioned that because the way the city works, lots of things happen within a month. Um, I'm actually having a meeting with the new property owner for the dog park on Thursday. There is some inertia be try behind trying to get this dog park moving sooner rather than later. So, no, oh, okay. So yeah, you know things change. We just <laughs> important. Okay, who would like to go next? Nicholas. Thanks. Uh, I'll I'll go next. I have two and then a second. Uh, so the first one that I want to add is Puro 077, which is the Macintosh Lake Nature Area Redesign and Construction. Um, I'm specifically interested in the phase five part of the plan where there's the new introdu introduction of the new trailhead. I think that might address the problem with the cars parked along Lakeshore Drive and, you know, that bothers homeowners there. So one question I do have on that is how many kind of, you know, new parking spots can we really make available on that new trailhead? It's not huge. It's 15 to 20. Emory, well, I have plans in a while. Cars less on the street, still. Okay. Thank you for that that answer. Uh, I think I think that's still you know a sizable amount. Uh, the, the second one I wanted to add was Puro One Four Six, which is the Roosevelt Park Improvements Design and Construction. Um, so specifically here, the fitness area part of the park uh, is, is super interesting to me. I feel like right now the only interesting part of the park is obviously the ice pavilion in the winter and in the summer months you have the activity pool which doesn't really serve adults and the rose garden which you know most people maybe visit once or twice but the fitness uh uh you know area i feel like that would be a, a way to draw in people you know more frequently uh, throughout the year and i could also envision you know adults frequenting the park the fitness center and then visiting downtown longmont grabbing a coffee maybe doing a little window shopping Kind of generating some commerce for the town, so that would be the second one that I would I would advocate for. And then the second that I would have would be for the Hover Park upgrades. Um, so for me, I don't know the park very well. I've actually been there once or twice, but what I've looked at uh, from the map is that it's located in an area nearby several apartment buildings. So my assumption is that there's a lot of people there who you know live near the area, don't have backyards not within close walking distance to other parks. And so, you know, that would be a way for us to, to help, uh, you know, serve those members of the community who don't have access to, to parks. So my, my second. And yeah, that's it. And, and just back on the Great. Macintosh one, sorry. Uh, just, you know, 15, 20 parks, uh, 20 park, parking spots, not a lot, but it still helps with the issue that we've had. And it does seem like it's a recurring issue. We keep on coming up in, in, in proud meetings. Uh, to address some of the issues we have at Macintosh. So I'll stop there. Jeff, do you have a question? I just don't want to move on before we talk about ones that people brought up. So on the Roosevelt Park one, can we clarify the little part where it says removal of the open storage, comma, I'm not looking at it right now. It says something about the ice pavilion. Can you clarify what are all three of those being removed? Like what's that really mean? Yeah, I can clarify, and I tried to, um, I, I don't want to sit here and reread it, but um, that CIP project for Roosevelt Park 
we could fund different portions of it. So if what I'm hearing is support for the outdoor fitness area, that portion could be funded in that CIP. But I also wanted to point out that there's a phase of that master plan that is not complete yet. So we could fund that. Um, and that's removal of that outdoor storage area, expansion of the parking. Um, I think there's a monument that was never built on the corner. So there's just some loose ends that haven't been completed um, and hasn't risen to a, a priority above everything else yet, but it is still hanging out there. Um, but you know, what I heard was support for more on the outdoor fitness side of it. So that's what we could focus on in that CIP if that's the more the priority. Thanks. Okay. Sue or Dan, would you like to go next? I'm happy to. Um, well, first of all, since we've been per been given permission to say this, I think that the number one priority for Longmont in a town of almost 100,000 is a new recreational type facility that has a swimming pool with at least 20 lanes, something to serve the future of Longmont, as well as all the other amenities that our you know, current facility has. Because um, I think, of course, through a lot of um, you know, public input that I think that we would see a real strong interest in supporting something like that, that serves families you know, and everyone of every age, whether that includes ICE or not, I don't know, but um, that to me is the number one priority for um, our city. As far as the um, ones from the list we were given, most of the ones I chose to focus on had to do with completing greenway projects. And I did, you know, put as my, my number one, um, the first one, the St. Brain Greenway Phase 13 East, but also listening to Scott, who is much more of a bike rider than I, I totally support all the, you know, the connectors. You know, I know, you know, what I do, I get on my bike and I go a lot of places, but I'm not an avid bike rider like some people. I just think that the more connectors we have and the more we, you know, have this greenway go through the entire town, it gets people out there walking, it gets people to all the little parks that we already have. Um, so to me, those were my um, number one priorities, um, and including the Union Reservoir upgrades that, because uh, the Greenway will reach the reservoir area. And uh, I think they really need some bathrooms and changing rooms and all of that, which I couldn't tell if that was already funded or if that was part of this. I wasn't sure. Does anyone... Steve or that Kathy, is, do you yeah, that isn't isn't funded. It's on the table for funding within that PR, PRO 186. Uh, Union Reservoir is a little bit confusing. You'll notice it's in there twice. PRO 10 is for um, new for the master plan improvement. So if we were to implement the new master plan for Union Reservoir, um, that would be in PRO 10 as well as the trail that, that we're planning. And, and the trail is funded in PRO 10, um, but we keep, PR, we keep um, looking at Union Reservoir upgrades in PRO 186 because we realize we need to keep the existing facilities out there usable um, in the meantime, while it gets so much use. So there's kind of two funding sources there, but it sounds like you're, you're looking at those upgrades so if we don't implement the master plan in the next five to 10 years, we need to, we need to keep those facilities um, usable in the meantime. So I hope that makes sense. It does. I just think it's pretty obvious that those upgrades are needed. You know, obviously they need to keep what they have, but um, from what I understand, and I don't go there very often myself, but it's a huge need to have those facilities, especially with, you know, to also accommodate those with disabilities, um, but they really need them. I mean, there's a lot of people that go out there. Each can I just ask a question? Um, yeah. Um, so Sue brought up um, 
same frame uh, Greenway Phase 13. Steve, I thought that was already funded or because it's tied to state money or is that not true? Uh, it's funded for design. Uh, we're showing con funding for construction currently in 2022 and 2023. Um, we could walk away from the state funding if it's not a priority. We're not obligated to spend it. Okay, that would be that'd be a horrible thing to do. That'd be like a wealth. Right, thing. right. But but you know what we're trying to do is test that we have limited resources and limited funding. Yes, I would agree that that would be tough to walk away from 1.5 million that we've already been awarded, but that is feasible if the board felt that that was important to do. Okay, so I misunderstood. So you're saying all of the funding was already there. This is no. just no. no. There's funded, it's funded for design. Okay, so this was funding for construction. This would be funding for construction. Okay. So yes, it is important to list St. Frank Greenway Phase 13 as a priority for construction. Okay. We know that the board wants us to continue extending the Greenway East and using the dollars available to us th through state funding as well as through city funds to complete the construction of that project. Okay, Dan, do you wanna go? Sure. Um, like Sue and I saw Jeff nodding his head, I think our number one priority should still be a rec center and we can't call it a competitive pool anymore, obviously. But uh, you know, based on what we've learned COVID wise, we're totally oversubscribed in terms of swimmers and lap lanes. And that's only gonna continue in the future. Uh, and along those lines, I mean, it's separate, but similar, the whole Dry Creek Park thing. I mean, we got kind of messed up because of the whole groundwater business, but that could or should have been a large park, something like Sandstone on the west side of town that never really happened, or hasn't happened yet. And it's, you know, we have a rec center on the southeast and we have a, you know, huge Reservoir Union Res on the east side, and there's Sandstone Ranch on the east side. On the west is McIntosh, which we just discovered is a huge need area, but is very, you know, it's a tricky deal how we improve it. And Dry Creek Park, which, you know, could be that kind of anchor, but is not yet because it's just can't be done or hasn't been done. So I guess I'd like to see something done that those would be my two main ones. And along that line, Jeff's point about the dog park, that is on the west side. And if it goes away, that'll be an awful thing. So I guess, you know, we kind of discussed it already, but I guess I'm just um, worried or nervous that this, the west side of town, which is growing just like the east side, could use some support or finish these projects. Great, thanks, Dan. Any questions or follow up before I jump in? Well, Dan sort of stole my thunder because you have a lot of those same things I was thinking. I mean, I agree that um, we really need to focus. I, I don't know what shape it's going to take. You know, I think it's going to, I'm not sure how it will come up on our agenda, but I think we need to revisit the need for a rec center. Um, as Dan said, I, COVID really highlighted how important recreation is and how limited we are. And I think even before that, any time you spend at the rec center, um, you can just see that the demand is greater than that facility can hold. And I recognize that's not on this list, but I, I also had that Dry Creek Community Park area as one of my priorities because I think it's just such an underutilized opportunity right now. And I know there are issues there that need to be resolved, but I would love to see some more priority emphasis given to that whole area and developing it out more to the vision. And if that includes a rec center, then that's great. <laughs> um, combines two priorities. Um, but if it doesn't, I think there's still a lot that could be done there that would make it a companion to sandstone and help to relieve some of the pressure there um, and create more opportunities for the on the west part of town. I also had a general 
priority around just trail connectivity, which I've heard from several of us. I don't know the trails well enough to select out the ones that I would raise that I um, am very supportive of continuing to build, particularly that sort of east-west connectivity and connecting up the trail system with the state park. Uh, I think those are really important and trying to fill in the gaps of some of those um, existing trails to help make them um, more usable. I do know just from riding the trails and having to jump off where there isn't connectivity and, you know, with kids, that's often an unsafe thing to do and is frustrating. So it'd be great to be able to follow those trails for, you know, longer and connect up the different recreational areas. So I did, I mean, in terms of your initial question, Jeff, I did hear, I think several of us were interested in different aspects of trail connect and greenway connectivity. So I don't think maybe there's, that's a follow-up conversation for us as a board, just to understand um, the status of that, where all these pieces fit together, you know, how, how we might prioritize. And I think, Scott, you have a good sense of that. Um, from the bicycle long knot, but um, maybe we could even carry that into our field trip discussion. Maybe we need to go on a bike ride and explore the Greenway connectivity. And I think also the rec center obviously is still a priority for many of us, so that probably is a future conversation also with council. Um, I also heard you know, Hover Park and sort of attention to resources in communities that might be lacking underserved communities, you know, making sure that we're prioritizing having, I think it's, I'm not, maybe it's Trust for Public Land that has the park for a 10 minute walk away. Everyone should have a park at least 10 minute walk away. And um, I don't know what Longmont status is with regard to that. If there are neighborhoods that don't have that. So, um, I, you know, I would be interested in following up on some of these topics if board members are. And I guess I would look to David, Steve, Kathy, if this feedback is helpful to you, how, you know, is there a way for us to capture it that would be more helpful? You know. Yeah, Steve. Oh. Go ahead, David. David or? Well, I did a quick tally. We had two mentions of the dog park, two mentions of Hover Park, not counting pages, two mentions of the Spring Gulch 2 trail from Union Reservoir to Sandstone, one mention from the Dry Creek, Dry Creek Trail from uh, Village at the Peaks to Sunset, one for Lake McIntosh, one for the Roosevelt Fitness Center, three for a rec center, two for the St. Fran Greenway Eastern Extension out to St. Fran, uh, yeah, St. Brian State Park. One for the union upgrades through PR 186, which is the existing infrastructure, and then two for completion of Dry Creek Community Park. So yeah, there's there's a lot there when you kind of look at that. I think there's it feels very individual, but I think Paige kind of grouped things in a way, Steve, that I think a lot of that could be lumped into trail extensions. Um, that includes, I think, as Sue was talking about how, how that does go through. Union. Uh, I think some of those renewal pieces, I think hitting those, I think for us, for me especially, knowing that we have lots of renewals, looking at which ones kind of float to the top. Um, and I would not say they're out of line with what we're hearing from the bigger community. So um, I don't know, I'll, I will let Steve, Kathy, and Dan win because what I really did hear is I think a little bit of a, even though this is not maybe as engaged as we want, I, I what I heard are projects I know are on our radar, they're pretty close to the top of what we're trying to do right now. Um, there was no real wild cards. I think the piece with Jeff not being here, the, the, the pool and rec center is something that I think is out of my scope of how we kind of move that forward. Um, but that's the pieces Steve mentioned that, um, the, those, those are the pieces, how we reprioritize, look at our way on the right track. How can we kind of group some of these or look at how we leverage resources? So I think that was a great conversation, but how do we move that next piece? that really isn't part of this. that doesn't have funding or doesn't have ways to do it with the, the rec center and, and the pool will be another piece, but I thought it was a good conversation. I would say all those, those, the, that score you kept, Steve, it's, it's what I have here as well, but I think I kind of looked at more like Paige with kind of grouping them. And I, I, I think that makes it seem a little more 
manageable as we have those conversations. Um, but I, I'll kick it back to, to Steve, Kathy, and Dan to see if they had a different takeaway. One other thing that I noticed in my tally is that there were 10 projects mentioned. Seven of them were new construction. Dog Park 2 is new construction, but replacing something that's existing. So that's a little on the gray side. And then Hover Park and Union Upgrades were um, restoration enhancements, that sort of thing. So it'd be good for the board to have, it would be helpful to staff, I should say, for the board to have a brief conversation about the philosophy is where we want to put our funds and resources is toward restoring, enhancing what we already have versus new construction. And, and maybe I've already heard it, if 70 to 80% of the project that we're hearing about are new construction, is there a philosophy or you want us to try to make both work, which is likely? Um, what's your thoughts are on that? I think we do have that coming up under new business, actually, a discussion about sustaining existing infrastructure. Yeah, so thanks, Paige. Yeah, and, and Timber just said that he's in the meeting now too, so he'll talk about that a little bit as well, and I'll kind of set the stage for that one. But um, yeah, that's a that's a good distinction, Steve. And I think it's one of the things that we talk about internally a lot as well. Well, and that's I'll just it. jump in if I could, and just say I think this input's really really helpful. I'm um, really in, impressed at how well you all know our our plans and our specific site master plans and are looking to complete those. And I just feel like the input we got is that balance that we're always striving for between trails, new park construction, taking care of what we have. And, and I think I'm continuing to hear that, that balance. There might be a, you know, slight, like Steve pointed out, slightly more of a push toward completing the master plans and some of this new construction because we've done a lot of work in park renewal but you know you guys brought up Hover Park and it's so funny because that's the park I'm getting most of the phone calls from the public on mm -hmm. and it is it's really you know the top of the list right now for for park upgrades um so you know I think the input that I've heard is is really helpful and really knows helps me know what to really get behind um so really appreciate it Great. Ann Wolfert, did you want to add anything? I think I just have to ditto, you know, exactly what Kathy said. It sounds like we've got a balance of new and renovations and trail connections, and it's the same story we've heard year after year. So before we close this out from the board members, I mean, I, for one, would like to propose that we have more conversation about trails and trail connectivity. And, it, you know, I would be interested to see if others are um, would also like that. And then I think there, I, maybe I'm a lumper, at least tonight I'm a lumper. But I think, you know, when you think about Union, Macintosh, and Dry Creek, you know, we're thinking about what are those anchors? you know, of our um, sort of outdoor recreation system and what do they need, which I think is also kind of a, a linked conversation. Yeah. So, you know, that might be another future topic for us to. So we, we, can, definitely, we can definitely do that. And I think, you know, for me tonight, I heard Kathy's enthusiasm and kind of reinforce some of the stuff that she was working on. And for me, I think, um, that idea of that trail connectivity probably, um, it's interesting having ever used their own words, I still probably do the same thing you and, and lump out things and things that probably I think of interest to me too, because I heard a lot of that trail connectivity. If, if, it's, if it's a renewal of a trail that I heard a little bit or addition of new trail miles, um, I think it's a good conversation because I think it'd be one good for um, the board to hear how all these little pieces are being together in a bigger picture. And um, again, just a conversation about, I think throughout I heard that, um, enjoyment of using our trails and how important it is to get people out there. So we can definitely have that conversation. Yeah, I think Paige that one of the agenda items and it could be June, July, August, I don't quite remember, is to have a conversation about missing trail connections or incomplete trail connections okay. with the board. And uh, so I think that's out there in the, in the near future, if I'm not mistaken. Great. Dan, and, and 
And just a remind, reminder that Boulder County can play a role in these trail connections too, as we've looked at you know connections um, from uh, Dry Creek Community Park and other alternatives from Union Reservoir to um, St. Frank State Park. So don't forget that there's another pot of money that we could pursue that um, creates those connections through the assistance of Boulder County. Great. Do you board members have any final thoughts or other topics that you'd like us to keep in mind for future meetings based on this conversation? Scott? Um, I, I'd like to propose that we put it on the agenda um, as new business somewhere, um, the rec center as its own piece, right? I, I don't think really we should do it as part of a CIP piece, but um, it is it is something that we have to go out for a vote on. It'd be interesting. It'd be good to hear from staff and and to know what other big plans may be out there that um, the city is looking to uh, to raise uh, money through bonds for. But it's it's clear that the board is interested in a rec center. I've heard it a million times from people in in the city. So I think it's something we should we should prioritize as one of our agenda items um, coming up and try to see, you know, where in the cycle that best fits, um, what the wording is that, you know, makes that all of that work out better than the, the, the last attempt that we had. Thanks, Scott. I think we can talk offline uh, with staff to figure out a best way to make a presentation to the board about that. I have some ideas for other staff members outside of our direct organization to maybe talk about some of the financial strategies for the city and other projects that are coming up. So maybe we, we, could, we could work on something here in the future, next couple of months to get something back to you guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah and I'll check in yeah. with David and Jeff on the agendas that we have laid out and see where we can make, make sure we have that fit in. I just want to say, Scott, I appreciate you kind of thinking about that other piece out there is where, you know, these are top priorities for us, but as you start looking at um, what council has laid out, and unfortunately, Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez isn't here tonight to kind of, you know, maybe weigh into this a little bit too, but um, it, that's what it comes into that bigger picture of what are, what are the bonding issues are out there, what are the funding issues out there, and really um, sometimes how stung or stinging is it still from the last um, go around this with some of the council members too. So um, it's a good conversation. I think, you know, us having a good way to kind of package it with Jeff and take that forward would be a great way to at least make sure people are aware that there's a bigger picture out there too if we talk about this. Great. Okay. Um, we should probably move on, but I appreciate that conversation. That was actually one of the more fun conversations I've had on the board just to hear what everyone's interested in. So thank you. Um, our next conversation will be related, so moving on to new business, discuss sustaining parks and recreation infrastructure. Who is the lead for that, David? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and kick this off. Timber's on right now, and I'll bring him to talk about our assets man management. Again, I think this has been great that um, Prav has been really asking for stuff that we as staff are talking about and working on even at, at our level and, and kind of moving up to deputy city managers and assistant city managers and how we look at this. So um, asset management has been a big piece in the city for a while, um, probably bigger in some of the operations and parks operations and in other areas. And Timber has been a big um, advocate for that and a big proponent for moving this forward in our group as far as determining what we have, how we take care of it, how we fund it. And we actually just had that conversation a bit today. And it does play on the first part of the this, this meeting and looking at Steve, um, I'm trying to remember what you said the numbers were, um, seven new and three, um, renewals um, or somewhere in that ballpark. But I think it's one of the things that we really have been pushing on is that we need to make sure that as we build new stuff that we can take care of what we have and that new piece. So a piece that has just been brought forward was the fact that when we put together a budget for a CIP, there's a page that says, what's it going to take to take care of that new shiny thing that people like to see? Um, is it staff? Is it contractors? Is it additional dollars? Um, and Timber will talk about how he comes up with those numbers. But there's a disconnect on the CIP when you get to the projects done and now becomes operational dollars. There really is no sort of 
assurance that those dollars carried forward in the two, three, four, or five years later once that park gets completed. So we have been working with our financial division and our um, city manager say, if we build this, council approves it, that's a tacit approval that this request will be the level one, be a level one request, which really, um, since I've been here and Steve and Dan can do much further back look, but use those level ones are things that we have to do because of some sort of um, rule, regulation, federal law, safety, and it falls in this, it really has to be funded, we have to get it done. So if you build something, we're saying, if you build it, we have to take care of it. So when it comes back, it will be funded. At, I mean, it will go in as a level one request, which really changes how we had to go back before with a new park, now asking for new funds that was competing against everything. So I think we're making progress. Um, we'll keep the this group apprised of that, but as Tim will talk about how we are doing that right now, and he can talk a little bit about how that level one uh, prioritization might help him in the future. Timber, is that fair setup? Sure, that's a lot. Thanks, David. <laughs> um, yeah, so asset life cycle and renewal, um, seven, I guess it was seven years ago now, um, you know, council passed the park and uh, greenway maintenance renewal fund that everybody should see on their uh, water bills. Um, and that was after an assessment during the master planning process of looking at all of our assets across the city and where they were at in renewals. A lot of things were failing. Um, so what we did is we developed a pretty robust asset renewal program that looked at all of the assets across the city of when they were built. And then we took all that information and we put it into our work management system, which now we can run reports on to say, hey, you know, Hover Park, for an example, if you ran the asset, you know, it, Hover Park was actually built in 1990. So, you know, it is now 31 years old. So it's coming up as it needs renewal. So um, as you're reviewing those CIPs too, one thing to keep in mind is that PR 186 is, is dedicated strictly to renewal. So the projects that are being identified in there are actually coming out of the asset renewal program. So the projects that are in there are either assets that are close to failing or have I don't want to say failed, but they're going to fail within the next five years we're projecting. So when we run that report, we actually go out and we look at all of the assets that are showing up in the five-year plan and um, see if, hey, yep, look, these assets are actually going to be close to getting ready for renewal here in the next five years. Um, some of the other things that we've been doing is um, because we didn't really have a good renewal program, um, if you can imagine a place like Lou Miller Park, didn't have an asset renewal program. So when you look at that park, a lot of the assets are out of renewal phase. What I mean by that is, you know, a, you may have to do lighting changes out every 15 years, but the building itself maybe only get, needs to get done every 30 years. Aligning 15 year projects and 30 year projects within that park so that there's kind of this constant renewal. What we've seen is, um, we actually look at all the assets that are getting ready to fail and we realign them a little bit to create a kind of a cohesive project, which Kathy's been really good at. Um, so like, you know, we're doing a full renewal now at Lou Miller Park. We're doing a full renewal at Alfalter um, rather than just going in and kind of piecemealing it. Um, but looking forward to new parks, what we're trying to do, really not just parks, I'm talking right-of-ways, greenways, is that when that project manager identifies the project and kind of the scope of what's going to be in the project is during the CIP process, they actually fill out the projected O&M costs. And we're trying to get it integrated better where we either have kind of a menu that they can choose from or just a generalized cost of how much it should cost per acre based on a set number of amenities. And then the project managers can take that, put it into the CIP process. And then as we move through to the park getting completed, what we will do then on the operating budget side is I will go back to look at that CIP, which was an approved CIP through council. So what we're saying and we're hearing from leadership is that if that CIP is approved at that same time, you're also approving those operating dollars that are associated with that. So that's kind of our catalyst, if you will, to say, hey, look, this CIP was approved four years ago with this number, with this number of dollars for funding. 
Now I can go into our one year operating budget process, put in some sort of, you know, um, inflationary value in there. Usually we use 3% and say, okay, these are the number of, this is the amount that we're going to need to maintain this system going forward. Um, I think that was everything. Is there any questions on that? So do you, do you have to go through the capital improvement process? I mean, and maybe just trying to understand how you're structuring this. So you're trying to set it up so you don't necessarily have to go through the capital improvement process for every, um, for this ongoing sort of maintenance and upgrades, or you still do? No, we still do. Yes. Well, um, yes. Anything for renewal, we try to go through the CIP process. So the way we do that now, though, is we actually re report on what assets we're expecting to see fail within a five-year period, and then developing either projects. You know, that could just be we're going to renew all of Lou Miller Park. Um, a couple of years from now, we actually have a bunch of lighting that's going to fail at the same time. So then we will do a lighting renewal project at multiple locations throughout the city. But yes, that's all through the CIP process. And a lot of those projects, the renewal projects, don't really have an additional operating cost associated with it. Some things do, but for the most part, they don't. Really what we're talking about is anything new coming online. We want to make sure that, one, the sheets are complete that are associated with that CIP when that project manager puts it in for operating budget so that we can go back and ensure that that project actually has the funds available to maintain it once it's built. So yeah, Paige, I think what uh, you know I was trying to get at the beginning is that Steve and Kathy have always done a good job of doing the CIP page that, that documents what the cost should be. Timber gives them that if we're gonna build a park of X acres, that many acres requires this many dollars um, or this much staffing. But what was happening was that disconnect because by the time Timber got around to doing the OM request, it was now like with this meeting, it was going up and having to compete against all the new shiny stuff which is can be hard sometimes. So this actually keeps it that link to that original request and it says this was already approved. Um, therefore, we need to maintain what we already have before we do something new and shiny. So I, I think we're making some good progress there. Um, the, the other thing I know Timber gave a, a good overview, but I don't know if Kathy wants to jump in and talk about how this kind of plays into um, how her projects lay out or she has any thoughts that she wants to share with the board on, on this portion of it. Well, I can jump in. I think Timber did a pretty good job kind of talking about how we just link the two, the asset management and the park renewal pro program are so linked and we work together. And, you know, I guess the way I look at it is, you know, asset management can be one-offs and can be taken care of in O&M if it's a a bench or, you know, a, a roof that or painting railings or things like that. Um, that's one way to handle it. But then as things build, like you see at Hover Park or Lou Miller Park, um, it's where we can kind of look at look at a park and go, gee, it's 30 years old. Um, there's multiple things that need to be taken care of at that park. So it's a good time to put it in a CIP rather than have it hit the O&M budget so hard um, and really tackle it as a renewal project rather than just consider it um, maintenance, but some of the asset management is completely handled in, in operating and maintenance on an annual basis. So it's, it's kind of this, you know, linked effort um, that there's multiple ways to, to handle it. And, and Timber brought up the lighting, you know, maybe, maybe we don't tackle one park, but we look at lighting system wide because that's grown to a, to a bigger effort that would warrant a CIP. So, so I don't know if that helps, but I think Timber explained it pretty well. Yeah. And the other thing we've added to our asset renewal program over the last couple of years is we had the renewal piece, which is, I want to replace this playground. We're going to replace the whole playground. Well, we've also added now the refurbished piece. So like tennis courts, it's a pretty expensive endeavor to repaint a tennis court. So we've added in now, when are we expecting to paint, repaint tennis courts? And that we can fund through operating dollars 
as one-time requests, or we can fund it through Park and Greenway maintenance uh, requests, which comes from the $2 fee over the operating budget side. But then there are, we, we do have funding set aside for um, projects that just come up through the year, small painting projects, um, irrigation repairs, light, you know, light bulbs fail, irrigation heads break, um, all of that type of activity. So David, do you guys feel like in Timber, um, because I know part of this is um, getting sustained funding for ongoing maintenance, you know, and making sure that, you, you know, you're trying to create mechanisms to tie new projects to, you know, ongoing funding for that. I mean, in, in my work, we have, you know, endowments for properties and you probably have that too on the conservation easement side, but are there any other funding mechanisms that you guys need or are looking into to make sure that there is some kind of funding like a certain amount set aside always to be tied to sort of asset management timber you want to talk about because like, timber is the one that really again i go back to timber and kathy they worked on some of the original um numbers to come up with how we fund these things there's another piece though because we are a bigger group than just our parks that dan might want to talk about his open space program and more of that ongoing maintaining natural areas in perpetuity as well and how we fund that because that is a different funding source but um before i go to dan i'll let timber jump in and see how he feels that we're doing with our ongoing um budget but our, our funding sources and if that's sufficient because we are going to be looking at here in the next year or so yeah, I think our ongoing operations budget every year has either been slightly on target or just underspent. So I think the, the conversation we are having now is we do have a lot of projects out there for renewal, and it really comes into a capacity piece. Um, it's Do we have the people that can manage those projects? I think that's where we're running into some issues now is do we have... We have all these great projects out there called shovel ready projects, if you will. It's just having the number of people to manage all those projects. It's getting, it's getting kind of a struggle. All right. Thank you, Timber. Um, Paige, did you have another question on that one or Kathy? Mm -hmm. I was just going to see if anybody else had a question. Kathy, did you have something? Well, I was just going to add that, you know, just to answer that question, that Park and Greenway maintenance fee fund is really that that source that we sought out and got approval for in 2014, the $2 fee that's on your utility bill. Um, and that's really what launched the park renewal program. But it can also fund just O&M on, you know, um, as we add at park. So I think you know, as as we grow and, and, and you're seeing a lot of new park projects, Timbers, you know, expecting a lot of that to come online. Um, we'll have to find that balance between CIP park renewal projects, um, which are really expensive. You know, if we're and, and I think Timbers always looking at and myself as well, you know, when we dive into something like Clark Centennial Park, which could be a renewal similar in nature to Garden Acres, which is a very big, expensive project. Um, we're, we're looking to use that fund, that Park and Greenway Maintenance Fund, and having the cash flow to do these park renewal projects, as well as find that balance of O&M for new parks coming online. Um, eventually, it's probably not going to be enough. Right now, it's enough because we haven't seen those parks, new parks come online, and we haven't had the staff to really, <laughs> you know, roll out those projects. I've been doing a lot of projects, um, but also need to work on new. So, so I think um, time will tell if we, if, if that funding source is going to be sustainable or, or not, uh, you know, as we bring, as we try to find that balance. Well, one thing that's really interesting too, is when you map out all the assets that we have in the system, um, the graph really follows kind of a wave pattern because we have, if, depending on how long you've lived in Longmont, there has been waves of development that have come in. And with development, there's usually new parks that come online. So you have like this big bump around 90 through 2006. And there's this just this huge, well, all those assets were built at the same time. So guess what? They're kind of all going to fail at the same time too. So 
finding a balance of when we spread those out to level out when we spend funding on renewal. And then you have big projects that happen like, you know, Kathy just did Garden Acres renewal, Clark Centennial renewal. Actually during this, this current CIP, Dry Creek Park is hitting its 20 year in 2026, which is currently in the five year CIP plan. So we had some things at Dry Creek Park that are scheduled for renewal already. Yeah, and just to be clear, you know, that that fund is a supplement to the general fund. So Timber's budget is primarily general fund. And so this is a supplement. So um, whether or not it's sustainable depends on how the general fund is doing. And so that's kind of why it's, it's always going to be a bit of an unknown. Great. Thanks. That was really helpful. So Paige, do you mind if I have Dan jump in real quick? You mind yeah, if I have Dan jump in real quick to mm -hmm. talk about the open space program? Go ahead. You know, the open space program is a totally different animal because we don't have the crazy infrastructure associated with um, similar in, in aspects of a developed park system. Fortunately for us, uh, many of our open space properties are under an agricultural lease and we count on those tenants to provide the machinery, the equipment, um, and some of the assets you know, to uh, accommodate those properties. We also have the ability in the agricultural leases to take their revenues that, that are being generated to us and put those back in, into the property. So if we have a head gate, I have the ability to you know, use some of those leases to re replace those, replace some fencing. A lot of that stuff is incorporated into the um, assets of the property. Um, so it's a little bit, it's a significant different animal from that perspective. Weed management and ongoing maintenance there, Dan, or how, how do you feel? Well, on some of the properties? Again, as we maintain, uh, again, as we grab properties, and it's not just open space properties, other properties that some of the utilities are using, you know, obviously we have a responsibility to maintain the vegetation. So as those new properties come on, come online, we need the additional resources similar to timber, but not to the degree. Um, because again, from Timber's perspective in the asset management, you know, we're talking about vegetative management, which is, and weed control, which is, you know, from a fiscal perspective, significantly less. Thanks, Dan. Great. Okay. Any, anything else on this topic? Okay, if not, um, Jeff is not here tonight, but I do want to talk about, um, we have in the past, the board has done field trips. I think we would like to try to do that if conditions allow this year. And so wanted to have at least a brief conversation about um, whether folks would be interested in pursuing that, uh, what time of the year, if there's a specific months or month that is best, and then what kinds of locations you might be interested in visiting or if there's a theme that you would be interested in. Um, I will throw out that I do think it would be, and I, I do think David, you and Jeff and I talked about this, combining the, the sort of trails conversation with, you know, visiting some of the trails and looking at connectivity. So I would, throw that out there as one option yeah. for a field trip and um, I'm flexible and where that would start and end, but you know, we could do a, a bike trip or a walking trip or whatever works best for people. Other ideas? Jeff? I'm in favor of the bike trip, but I have another idea, except I think you guys did it before I was on the board, in which case that's silly, which is I've only been to Button Rock once and I barely know any of it. And I'm very interested in learning more about that since it sounds like a very popular asset, but has already been a field trip there, maybe just the year before I joined the board. Uh, it's, it's there was one. Was... I didn't, wasn't able to go on it either. I think it was, might have been before I joined. Dan, did you go on it? <laughs> 
Yes, and it was way cool. We got to go inside the dam, which was way cool, or see the tunnel underneath. Um, and then it was kind of a what happened after the flood sort of tour. Um, and it was interesting, and city council was invited, and but there's a lot of other places, so I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, I feel like I could go check it out on my own with some like someone can give me a little. You should go look at this. We can work yeah, with you, Jeff. What, David? We can work with you, Jeff, to make sure that our board members get a chance to see some of the stuff up there too. So, um, if that's not the, the top priority, Button Rock is something we can work with our, our rangers and stuff to maybe make sure you get a chance to. We could check out the connectivity from a bike ride starting at Button Rock and then try to make it all the way to St. Brain Park. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that one. That's the right direction downhill. <laughs> well, I picked that for a reason. E bikes. <laughs> okay other other ideas the button rock idea came to us from staff as i recall is there anything now david or jeff or i guess jeff's not here i mean is there something you guys like to show off the whole uh you know, resilient St. Vrain. Is there a tour of all that? Or I'm just throwing something out. I don't know. No, I think it's a great, I think it's a great um, kind of closing that loop because we did take um, Priyav and council up there. And that's what really kind of pushed the button rock master plan. I think as people saw Jamie Friel as a ranger up there and what he was doing with the increased use with all the dog use council really said, you need to do something with this to help you know manage this property. So now Danielle's been working on the button rock master plan. COVID slowed down that process a little bit. So it might be a nice one to do once you wrap up that master plan and kind of say, here's where we started and here's where we're at. So um, I would say this year at this time, I don't think there's a highlight we could hit, um, but that'd be a great uh -huh. way to kind of close that loop when we get maybe that master plan or something done, done Dan. I think it's a great idea. Well, that no, I was asking if there's something other than Button Rock that you wanted oh, to I show off. Uh, you know, something at, like I said, the, you know, resilient St. Vrain, is there a, is, are we at a good spot now? It seems like not quite, but, or something out at Union or something at McIntosh to understand the problems there or et cetera. I'm, I'm, it's hard, I guess, from my standpoint, it's hard to pick a park. I mean, right. I like the idea of getting on a bike and traveling to as many as possible, but I'm not sure how practical that is. So I, I think one of the things that that could do is you, we could highlight some, if we're, again, I'll, I'll wait for the board staff, they want to do a, 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 a hiking, biking, what, what works for people and how that works. But um, I think highlighting some of those new trail connections and maybe looking where those gaps are really at and talking about where you could get from here. Um, you could you could hit quite a few of those you, from McIntosh to um, whatever part of town we wanted to do this on. But there, there's ways we could really hit some of those highlights, I think, if we did a combination of a hiker bike tour of the trails talk connectivity and we could talk about some of the parks along that as well but mcintosh is one that we could talk about unions when we could talk about and all those are, are kind of tied to our, our trail system steve do you have any thoughts on that again going along rsvp out to the east um we, were looking at we had also at some point talked about dickens farm park that i you know was thinking that that could be part of a trail part of that trail yeah exactly tubing so <laughs> tubing right tubing <laughs> um yeah no i'm not tubing um <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so i guess it's really um a, a desire of the board whether you would like to see something uh, celebrate a completed project or view future projects or gaps in our our, our system and we could do both um yeah. doing a bike tour to view gaps in our trail system seem somewhat problematic because there's nothing to ride on because there's a gap there. Um, so that is, uh, there, there's challenges with that. We can certainly do some stops around the city off of a, a van and, and walk out and look at some different trail uh, uh, gaps. Uh, I find gaps easily identified on uh, Google Earth or you know a big map, but I happen to know the city pretty well off of aerial. Um, so really, it, it, I think it'd be great to go up and, and see Dickens and see RSVP and see all the work that we've been working on for the past seven, eight years. And that would be a, I could talk about that stuff for hours and hours. I'm, I'm still waiting to hear about our 
National APWA Award application for Dickens. And I'm, news is good news, I suppose. I'm hoping to hear in the next couple of weeks. So by May, hopefully we're celebrating that at the, the next PRAB meeting. But um, yeah, really, it's, it's just a strategy. Do you, do you want to see things that are uncompleted? Or do you want to see things that are completed and awesome? <laughs> also, like how much time do we have to dedicate for this? And with COVID, are we really all riding in one van together? And think like the biking thing is yeah. nice. We can all be outside. Um, but I do think like, you know, a two hour thing I could do, I can't do a right. five hour half day thing. There's no way. I think a two hour thing, I, Again, we'll leave this, we can kind of leave it, maybe a little undecided here, but I don't know if we have, Paige wants to wrap this up on this one, but um, I, I do think that ability to look at places like Dickens, and Steve, I think, you know, your ability to use Google Earth and kind of know where these are, but to talk about directionally from how do we go from here to there, um, doesn't mean you have to drive to that gap, but you start talking about those um, long-term planning visions that you might have as you kind of move, you know, through our system and look at celebrate some of those areas, be it the the Spring Gulch Trail. I, I could see that Dickens to Spring, Dickens to almost Union could be something and that we could do it done, get done in a couple hours and celebrate some new trails, talk about the gaps and where these new trails will connect to once those other pieces tie in and do a little bit of celebrating. But there's a pretty safe route from Dickens to Stephen Day Park, even without the Spring Gulch Phase 3 connection, if we were to use the trail on the north side of 119 over to the bike lanes and County Line Road down 26 and then using the new Spring Gulch Trail. So that would be a doable ride for a group of people this size. Right. And I'm thinking, Steve, on the, along the way, we can talk about Costco. We can talk about Irwin Thomas, the gravel yeah. mining operations that impact open space and park properties. Swing our way up to, you know, Spring Gulch. Talk about all the development around Union Reservoir and those opportunities, you know, on the way back, stop at left hand and have a cocktail while we're looking over at the new RSVP section. Uh, well, I was we, hoping the concierge would pick us up at Stephen Day, but we'll see. Well, we could do that too. But, you know, again, we can show you, you know, the original phase one of RSVP out at Sandstone and look at the wildlife and the craziness that's going on out there, um, you know, and how we've used root wads. There's a ton of stuff you, that we would love to show you. Again, it's, you know, there are certainly limitations on your days and the numbers of hours, but, um, you know, if you let staff do it, we'll, we can camp out for the week. Sue? I have to say, I really like that idea. I like the idea of getting on bikes. I know that I have been on, you know, some really excellent field trips with the board. Um, they are so worthwhile just being, you know, right there experiencing it. So what you've all just sort of described this little last connection, I think would be really um, a worthwhile trip to do. I think it'd be really good. And, and I don't know, like I went and took a peek behind um, left hand, that area that's closed off that part of the bike path. I know that's, that's not so much the city project, that's more the field of, in, I mean, whatever, I'm not sure. Well, it's a city project. It's, it's a city project being funded oh. by, by of our engineers, but yeah, it's, it's a city project. No. The work, that, that force well, is not being, no, that's, that's not true. a core project. Yeah, that's a city project. Oh, that is it. Okay, but that's that really, city. that was really interesting. I kind of snuck behind the lines, I'm sorry oh. to say, and um, <laughs> I'd love to have more explanation because it was fascinating. And that mobile home park behind there, if I understand, has been sold. Yes, to a mobile to a developer. No, to another mobile home park company. Okay, well, what is, I thought there was a new big development right in that area that was in the- In that area. Okay. So I, no, there, there, there's there's nothing right. right there slated for development just to the west. West. Uh, north of Colorado Materials. There's a, that parcel that's full of uh, construction equipment. That's up slated for development. Right. I mean, west up the river that's later for development. The mobile home park changed hands. It was an unfortunate article in the Times Call where they advertised the mobile home park being changed from one mobile home park company in California to another in California. They took a photograph of a redevelopment sign. The only redevelopment was us replatting the small 
not bigger than this room lots that we purchased from them to uh, do the RSVP project. We had to replat some things legally to make sure that our property is separate. But there's no plans for redevelopment at this point in time of the St. Frame Mobile Home Park. All right, because I was concerned when I saw that, very concerned. Um, and anyway, Sue, regardless of how this goes, I'm happy to take meet you over a left hand for a beer and chat with you about the uh, the project <laughs> going there right? anytime. Let me know. I would, that'd be great. Okay. <laughs> so I wonder in terms of rather than trying to do scheduling now, would it be possible to do like a little survey of board members in terms of like months and like time period? Sounds like a roughly two hour time period would work. Can we do that as follow-up or? I mean, in the past. I'm looking at you, David. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead, Sue. No, in the past, we've always done it in the summer, but I do think a lot of people have, you know, go on vacation. You're never going to find a perfect time, but um, personally, I would think earlier yeah. rather than later. In my... Dan? Uh, in the past, I think, as I recall, this was a Monday night in lieu of Zoom call thing, at least like when we went up to Button Rock. Right. And it was a couple, maybe three hours. No, I'm thinking a six to eight kind of thing. I don't remember exactly. Is that what we foresee or is this a Saturday afternoon deal? Staff, will, I'm sure staff will be flexible and we can do whatever yeah. works best for this group. Yeah, you're right, Dan, that typically we've done this in lieu of a proud meeting on a Monday evening. Uh, we've done it at like 5.30, 5 o'clock to 7 or 8 o'clock, depending on where we're going. Um, historically, the board has invited council to join us. Right. Um, and we so we would want to schedule that in such a way. So that's an opportunity for the board to speak with council members, let them know their priorities for council to consider as they, as they move forward. Um, and we can certainly figure out a way for folks to cycle when they want to cycle, folks to drive if they don't want to cycle, to make sure that we're meeting at strategic gathering points and trying to have those conversations. Um, Jeff was right about COVID and you know, we would certainly follow whatever COVID requirements are in effect at the time. And, um, you know, so maybe later in the summer, maybe better, contrary to what you said, Sue, I don't, I don't know. It's really up to y'all, but um, it's, yes, you're right. I it's was wondering, like, maybe July or September, because I feel like August is always tricky, but I don't know. So, so maybe we could, oh, go ahead. No, we were just asking to see if this evening, if we could kind of get a quick temperature from each of the members right now and see if, we can do that work. now, or yeah, Did I would you want to do email. send out an email as a follow up. We, we can, let's do that. We'll work with some of our admin staff and see if we can do that. It might be easier. People get a chance to look at their calendars and, and have that ready yeah. for us by the time we meet next time. So, great. Dan? Uh, my one point would be that if we're doing a bike ride, late June has the most light late. Oh, true. And the Theoretically, the thunderstorms in July haven't started yet. Theoretically. Okay, well, let's plan to come back to the next meeting with um, a proposed date and general itinerary, if that's okay with you, David. And yeah, we can do that. I'm sure we can use either and, um, Survey Monkey or some sort of email piece with sort of that June, July, yeah. August, okay. September. Um, Saturday or weekday and see what works best for people. And I'm happy to follow up with you to help okay. think through the questions if you if that's helpful. Okay, thanks everyone. So the next item is to discuss any questions that board members have from the materials that were in the packet. And if they're rec center questions, we might have to hold them till next time. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say yeah, there's, no, Dan? there's not really a rec center update because Jeff knew he wouldn't be here. I, it, there there's sort of one, is. Isn't there? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah, there is.
Any questions from the packet materials? Okay, if not, do we have any additional items from staff? Dan? I'll just let you know that we are um, starting the ball rolling for the annexation of Lake McIntosh. So David and I met with uh, um, development services and we're soliciting um, survey uh, an annexation survey. And hopefully we will have that by Friday. Um, and it's anticipated that it'll take us approximately three months to go through that annexation process. That's it. Great, thanks. Yeah, I saw that in the news. Any other items from staff? None from me. Okay. Timber? Any items for, from the board? Anything else you'd like to bring up? Yeah, Dan. Um, I have two. The first one is I saw that City Council discussed Lake McIntosh amongst with you folks, David in particular, um, and Dan, is there something we need to do or should be doing with res in response to all that? Or do you guys have a go forward plan you wanna share? Or, I mean, I, I, heard, I read in the paper, I guess, mostly, you know, it's the same sort of thing you'd reported to us before, more patrols, more signage, you know, we're hiring uh, additional rangers, et cetera. Is there anything you need from us or that we should be involved with? I appreciate that, that question because I think one of the things that, um, the reason we brought it to this group was, again, we know some of you live out there, some of you have friends out there, some of you use it, and always wanna make sure we're doing kind of aligns with um, what the community is looking for. Um, so as you, you kind of read through that and heard that, I, I think the big thing is if you, as you're working with your friends and neighbors and out there and seeing stuff that either is working well or not working, um, to let us know. But I would say exactly what you, you talked about. We're going to go through this season. We've already had the ability to hire on some additional rangers. Timber and Dan have done a great job with that. Um, done some additional training, which will also help. Um, we're going to be doing this year some temporary signs. Um, they're not going to be the 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 paper laminate that'd be an aluminum temporary sign um, that will work on that. Dan's got the ability to get some grant dollars with uh, Mark Smart Partners to do access areas so that people aren't having to tromp through vegetation potentially to get to launch their vessels. So we have a, a pretty robust plan, um, but we're gonna need some additional dollars. We'll be putting in some more dollars to the 2022 budget. So this year, we're gonna use those additionals to have some temporary signage, continue to monitor, PD is gonna be working with us. Um, and I would say when we get together once a month, those of you that are out there and use it or hear things, please let us know is probably the biggest thing and provide feedback um, to your friends and neighbors using on what we're doing, that'd be great. Well, just FYI, uh, weekend, what, eight, nine days ago Saturday, I lost count at 60 plus boats on a 25 boat maximum lake. And two days ago on Saturday, which was kind of a grim, weather in the morning there were already 25 boats and so that's a impossible number right now i mean that that regulation is just isn't going to happen so uh, i did talk to council about, about that and there was council members who really want us the challenge right now and dan can talk about it too is that <coughs> that is part of the adopted master plan however it was never we would have a we don't have a rule and reg that says there has to be 25 no more than 25 people on that body of water so if someone out there, they really could not at this point, we could put a sign up or something, but we don't have a rule and reg that addresses that at this point. Ah. So is it, do we, is 25 a number because it keeps people safe? Is this a number because it's consideration neighbors? Is it 25 for um, wildlife impact? So I think if we can address safety out there, if we can address noise, if we can address those pieces, um, maybe it's trying to manage the activity more than the numbers because we are gonna be looking at putting in for a boat for out there in 2022 as well. It'd be hard for us right now to say, who was the first person on, who was the 26th on, 26, you're off, you have to stand here and wait, but you know someone's putting their paddleboard in across the lake. So I think working um, to see 
I'm, I'll go back and look at council too, because there definitely was debate on, do we need to have another regulation that staff can enforce or as enforcement, you have to be wearing a vest, you have to be wearing a life jacket or a flotation device. You have to stay out of the wildlife closures. If we can manage those pieces, is that, is that easier than managing a number? I, I'm with you. I think that's smart because that number, I don't see, it's just totally impractical, both well, in again, size and any number at all. Dan, again, that number was generated back in 2003. Right. And you understand that at that point in time, paddle boards were where? <laughs> they didn't, you know, they really didn't exist. So, I mean, it's a brand new entity. You know, um, we're, I'm counting the days when the new buoys come in and the rangers and my staff can get those buoys out to, you know, demark um, that uh, Northwest sh shoreline is habitat to keep people out of there. Those are our priorities. Um, again, as David said, safety is an issue, is clearly an issue. And it's things like PFDs on all these boats and uh, a child under 13 of years of age must be wearing one. Um, you know, again, it's going to be a lot of education and hopefully, um, you know, the Rangers are going to be out there in, in, a, in a presence. Um, our Rangers, um, those that are on anyhow, from Button Rock and Union and these community Rangers all just this past week just went through four significant days of training with the police department and our city attorneys and and city prosecutors. So, um, you know, I, what I heard from those Rangers, it's the best training they've had period ever. And um, one of them has been here almost 16 years. So um, it, it's a great step forward. Well, and again, my main point is it's starting already. So yes. any nice day, you know, like we discussed last year, it's been discovered. Everybody knows a nice day. Hey, let's go to Lake Mac. You know, I mean, it's, it's, we're starting. Yeah, I, and, and, I, I was again. At, go ahead, Dan. I was just gonna say I was at uh, Golden Ponds um, Tuesday night. I thought I'd, you know, spend a couple hours just kind of dinking around with the fly rod. And this is at six o'clock at night, and, and I was lucky to find a parking. <laughs> so we, it's happening. It's there. Yeah. So that's what I was just gonna say too. I think that this this group of rangers we have right now, I believe we we have six new rangers that we didn't have that last year. So it's gonna be a big help. But those are the same rangers that will be at Golden Ponds. They'll be trying to keep kids from jumping off bridges at Dickens Park. They'll be out doing the new trail connection. So um, you're not gonna see a ranger at McIntosh all the time. And I think that's as we kind of move forward and say, as we start looking at budget for 2022, do we need to have some dedicated people, some of these more, these busier parks? So um, I think we're making inc incremental change in that direction to address this, but uh, we're, we're gonna know we still have some gaps this coming season. Yeah, and we will okay. start next week on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when you'll first start seeing the community rangers out actually doing patrols. And the other so element one... that David failed to mention, it's gonna be a significant duty is contacting the homeless or those camping along the greenways. That's gonna take a significant amount of time also. I, I hate to keep going here, Paige, but now this has been opened up. It's a great piece. So I hope that I'd like the community to know what we're doing with that too, because Dan mentioned that training. Um, a lot of those rangers come in with natural resource backgrounds and they're used to doing fishing violations or hoping to talk about people about the Abert squirrel up at um, Button Rock. Um, but managing homelessness and um, homeless camps in our community has become a big part of this. And our, this ranger group has been trained not only with our um, PD and our attorney's office, but also with our homeless services outreaches so that they know when they're contacting people that they can try to get them services in addition trying to make them get in compliance with our rules and regulations. So I have a second one if you're ready. Are we done? My other point was to ask again about <laughs> Uh, making the doors on tennis courts functional again as doors. Uh, I bring that up because thank you, uh, Timber, with the bathrooms are open again and people are using handles apparently to get the doors open and shut. Uh, and the CDC released things saying we don't get COVID anymore from touching surfaces. So, but balls still go out in the street and uh, from tennis courts. And so I think it's high time that we undo the permanently open gates on tennis court doors. I noticed that at Falter, the doors are functional. Um, and 
it would be great for Quail and Carr and Pratt and the other multi-corded facilities to have doors that can stay shut. Yep. So if you're in the process of calling, sorry, David. No, I was going to say that you're going to these meetings with Public Health, so go ahead. No, yeah, we're in the process of reinstalling all the gates on all the tennis courts, basketball courts throughout the city. Also installing all of the benches that we took out. Um, we just we got a little bit behind with the big snowstorm, so we're ah. we're going. So it is have, happening. Just it is happening. Yep, yeah. like you've seen Great. a couple of them pop one up. We're in the process of getting them all back up. I was on the CDC webpage today in Boulder County and looking for all my data. To, you know, great. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Yep. There you'll. They're going up. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Any other items from the board, Scott? Um, I have a question on the same frame Greenway, um, south of Boston, east of uh, South Pratt Parkway. Um, it used to be a mobile home park. Is there a plan for that space? Um, I was just looking to see in the CIP if there was gonna be a project that's planned for there or is there a future plan for that little space as a park or something? It's just south of Budget Home Center. Yeah. Steve, do you want uh, to touch on that? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Public Works and Natural Resources is working with other uh, departments and divisions within the city to um, repurpose that property. Um, we, the current philosophy from our city leadership is that it was once affordable housing. It should probably remain affordable housing. We are working with Longmont, what do we call it? L-U-H, Longmont, Longmont. Um, yes, thank you. Um, working with them to see if they will purchase that property uh, from the funds that bought it originally and try to repurpose that for affordable housing. There's nothing okay. in stone yet. That's just the discussions that are going on right now. Um, but we as a department would like to offload that property now that we've, we're done using it for staging of construction. And so, yeah, right now, uh, Timber's uh, work group is tasked with maintaining it but uh, we're looking to turn it into something else here in the, in the near future. Okay, cool, that thank you. Question? Yep. Sue, did you have something? Just to comment, um, I just wanna thank, especially, um, you know, David, Dan, Steve, Kathy, and Timber. I'm always so impressed at these meetings when I hear you talk and I, when I read the information we get in the board packet. Um, I just think Longmont is outstanding and stellar when it comes to their parks and recreation. I just from other places I go and other people I talk to, um, I just want to thank you guys. I think you do a really incredible job and I know you're short staffed and probably underpaid, but I was a teacher, so I understand that part. But uh, anyway, thank you. Well, thank you, Sue. Sue. Thank you very much, Sue. And I just want to tell you that I couldn't agree with you more on the dedication of your staff. I don't think many people, one, know the extent of what they actually have. I don't know a lot of people know how much they have from Sandstone Ranch up to Button Rock and everything in between, but the staff you have here is great. And um, a lot of people offer my staff tonight, but just so you know, uh, that continuity of staff, Steve and Dan both hit their 20 year anniversary with the city this year. So you got people that are um, committed and dedicated to this program. Thank you guys. Great, thanks, Sue. Anything else? Okay, seeing nothing, I uh, would take a motion to adjourn. I'll make and a motion. I move we adjourn. Oh, go ahead, Scott. No, let Dan do it. <laughs> All right, I need a second. I'll second. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the competition. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Thanks. Thanks Have a good night, volunteers. everyone. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Hey, Sue, call me about that beer. We'll get a beer and we'll talk about the, the project. Yeah. Okay. I'll email your um, phone number to me. <laughs> okay. I'll do that right now. Okay. Bye. Bye.